This is a video outlining the surgical steps and indications for osseointegrated screw placement for Baja use. The most common indications for Baja use include single-sided deafness from idiopathic sudden sensory hearing loss as well as one-sided hearing loss associated with fistular schwannomas. Additionally, ipsilateral conductive hearing loss can be treated with Baja. Common conditions associated with unilateral conductive hearing loss that may benefit from Baja include patients with atresia, patients with conductive hearing loss and large canal wall down cavities that are not adequately treated with conventional hearing aids, or additionally patients with a chronic draining ear that don't accommodate a conventional hearing aid well. Baja surgery can be performed under local anesthesia, under light sedation, or under general anesthesia according to patient and surgeon preferences. Generally speaking, there are three different surgical approaches for Baja. The first is the traditional or conventional method of dermatome technique, where an inferiorly based split thickness skin graft is created and the underlying subcutaneous tissue is removed. The, the dermatome technique is associated with greater cosmetic deformity and surrounding alopecia and is therefore used less commonly today. The second technique is the linear incision technique. A four to five centimeter vertical incision is made and the surrounding subcutaneous tissue is removed. This is associated with less alopecia and less of a cosmetic deformity. The final technique is the skin punch technique and this is the focus of the video today. This technique is the most minimally invasive, results in less cosmetic deformity, virtually no surrounding alopecia, and minimal incisional pain and recovery time. However, because no underlying tissue is removed, there is a greater risk for skin overgrowth and crusting after surgery. In general, Baja surgery is associated with very few complications and good patient tolerance. The most common complication of Baja is skin overgrowth and crusting around the incision. This is mitigated by undermining and removal of subcutaneous tissue surrounding the Baja site as well as using a longer post. Poor osteointegration of the implant into the bone is uncommon and may be associated with diabetes or a history of prior radiation. Two very rare intraoperative complications include CSF leak and intracranial bleed during drilling. Again, these are very rare. This is an adult patient with single-sided deafness. We are operating on the left ear. The first step of the procedure is to mark the location for Baja placement. This is generally about 50 to 60 millimeters posterior superior from the external auditory canal meatus along the temporal line. The temporal line is best suited for screw placement because of its rather thicker bone. It avoids the mastoid air cells and it also avoids the thinner squamosal temporal bone located superiorly. It's important to ensure the surgical site is not placed too close to the pinna. Next, a needle can be used to mark the thickness of the subcutaneous tissue which can help with post selection later. A needle is passed through the subcutaneous tissue to the bone and the skin level is marked. The length of the needle can then be measured. In this specific case, we measure a length of approximately eight millimeters, so a longer post will be required if no undermining of skin is performed. Next, an injection of 1% lidocaine, one to 100,000 with epinephrine is performed for anesthetic effect as well as vasoconstrictant. It's important to measure the thickness of the underlying subcutaneous tissue before injection because the injection will inflate the tissue and result in an inaccurate measurement. Next, the skin punch is performed. This is generally performed using a size 4 or size 5 millimeter punch. The skin punch is carried all the way down to the bone and periosteum. The resulting skin plug is removed and hemostasis is obtained if necessary.
although not necessary, it is sometimes helpful to create a very small nick in the superior and inferior skin to give just a little bit more working room. Next, the underlying periosteum is elevated to accommodate the implant placement. The drill is set to 2000 RPMs. The 4mm drill guide bit is attached to the drill along with a 3mm white spacer. It's very important to drill as perpendicular as possible. Placing a drill guide on the back of the drill can help with this. Drilling is performed at 2000 RPMs with heavy irrigation. Drilling should continue until the white spacer touches the underlying bone. Following this, the depth of the hole should be palpated with a thin, blunt instrument such as a gimmick to ensure there is no exposed dura before removing the white spacer and proceeding with a 4mm drill. If there is exposed dura after using a 3mm drill, generally a 3mm osteointegrated screw is placed. If there is solid bone at the depth, we then proceed with a 4mm length screw. If there is no exposed dura, the white spacer should be removed and the hole should be extended to a depth of 4 millimeters, again at 2000 RPM in constant irrigation. In this particular case, a 4 millimeter countersink is being used. You will notice that there are two bevels or edges on the countersink drill. The first level of blades provide the total depth of the drilled hole. The second level create a very small bevel on the surface of the cortex of bone. Drilling should proceed until the second bevel or second level of blades engage the cortex of the bone. It is critical that the drill hole is placed as perpendicular as possible to the surrounding skin. Once again, drilling is performed with constant irrigation at a setting of 2000 RPMs for the countersink drill. Next, the surgical site is irrigated and inspected. Note the circumferential lip of bone removed on the cortex from the second tier of blades on the countersink. Next, the drill console settings are changed for implant placement. This is on a slower speed at a setting of 20 to 40 newton centimeters depending on bone quality. The fixture and abutment are attached to the drill and placed at a slow speed between 20 and 40 newton centimeters. It's important that the titanium implant does not touch anything except the clean drill hole. It's also important to avoid irrigation until the threads of the implant have engaged the bone. Gentle manual tightening of the screw can be performed at the preference of the surgeon, mainly to ensure there is good coupling. The base of the abutment is examined to ensure that the screw has been fully inserted. A suture can be placed if needed to ensure the skin is tight around the post. A healing cap is then placed. The central button is inserted to ensure a snug fit. Zeroform gauze is wrapped loosely around the abutment to help with stabilization. The healing cap and the zeroform are generally removed at about a week after surgery.
This concludes our instructional video on Baja placement.